very good evening dear students the next topic mentioned in unit number 5 of microbes and environment the release of gmo to the environment and their impact and the ethical issues so this is one of the important topic in environmental microbiology and especially we are having lot of concern at this present era of science so that is what we are going to discuss in the subsequent uh, slides so what are gmos gmos are nothing but genetically modified organisms so i am sure that you are familiar with this term genetically modified organism especially you might have heard bt tomato bt brinjal bt potato bt cauliflower and bt cotton and many more examples so what do you mean by this genetically modified organisms or gmos these are the living organism whose genetic material especially the dna or gene has been artificially manipulated in a laboratory through a process called genetic engineer okay or recombinant dna technology and this create the combinations of plants animals microorganisms such as bacteria virus and their gene that do not occur in the nature through traditional cross breeding approaches so whatever the gene you wanted to transport or transfer from one organism to another organism it is possible to uh, do this particular method called a uh, genetic engineer so that whatever the new traits or a feature of the gene i you know that all the properties that a living organism is showing due to the presence of certain genes and this gene can be selectively identified and that can be cut and transferred through a particular vehicle and that can be uh, 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 transported to another organism and the gene will express that particular organism and it to produce a new traits or no character what the the organism is does not have in the previous time okay and this particular approach is known as the genetic engineering that is known as mean genetically modified organism and this was first done in 19th century one of the milestone the historical milestone of a 19th century by two great scientists herbert boyer and stanley cohen and they were the, uh, uh, the the scientists they have created the first genetically modified organism in the uh, science and uh, why they don't w- wanted to do the genetic manipulation and this genetic manipulation can be done for so much of i uh, mean adverse effects okay so the conventional method of modifying plants and animals that means to say the selective breeding okay you know the plant breeding or animal breeding and cross breeding can take longer time okay so that is a natural process and the organism should wait and they the they, they during the mating of their uh, particular uh, uh, step and this particular uh, genes are cross breeding and they will be producing the offspring okay and this selective breeding and cross breeding can produce mixed result with unwanted traits appearing along side the desired uh, characteristics okay so this selective breeding and cross breeding that produce the mixed result that with the unwanted features that is appearing along with the organism with the desired characteristics okay so the specific modification in a particular 
particular target of the DNA by using biotechnology has allowed the scientists to avoid this problem and improve the genetic makeup of an organism without unwanted characteristics of a gene okay conventionally when a gene is transported to I mean, naturally, the cross-breeding or selective breeding, the desired and undesired properties will be will be uh, visible. Okay, but if we want a desired characteristics, what is the gene that is responsible for that particular characteristics can specifically identified and that can be transported to a different organism via a vehicle called gene cloning then that can be used to create a new genetic system of the organism and that prevent or prohibit the expression of the unwanted character of this particular gene and this is the biggest advantage of gene manipulations okay and as you can see some of the manipulated genes and that expressed in the normal in a particular tree that is cotton okay if you look the normal cotton and this is bt cotton okay the bt stands for bacillus thuringiensis is a bacteria their resistant gene with so much of desired properties will be injected to the cotton plant and this particular plant will be resistant to the herbicide pesticide and insects okay pest insects etc and that what will happen due to that particular features the 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 gene will be expressed and you will be getting the cotton okay so that will be when you are comparing with the normal cotton and their uh, seeds and the cotton uh, and normal uh, cotton the genetically modified cotton you will be having a lot of differences in terms of the quality and the uh, quantity similarly here you can see the you know brinchal okay the agricultural palm due to the pest attack and a uh, lot of insects attack Attack, what you can see lot of problems are happening and this can be prevented by using the genetic manipulation okay so that is this you can see that is known as bretty brinchall okay and this side you can see the biotechnological manipulated tomato okay so that is very fresh and uh, uh, quality tomato okay and here you can see okay a potato here you can see how fresh it is okay you can see potato this is bt potato so like that in all the plants the desired gene what you wanted to incorporate that you have incorporated and the and you have, what you have done and you have a uh, uh, you have uh, made a desired characteristics and you have expressed in a particular plant okay and that is the biggest advantage of gm crops or genetically modified uh, crops okay and how you will do this genetic modification okay say for example the desired characteristics you have identified from such some sources such as bacteria this is a bacteria the prokaryote the bacteria doesn't have a nuclear and this gene consisting of certain peculiar features you think that has a particular features and that gene that dna you identify you isolate the dna and extract the dna and isolate it and what you need to do the desired region of interest that particular small region you cut by using certain molecular scissors okay that is known as restriction endonuclease that enzyme okay that enzyme you use and you cut from this particular portion and what you need to do this you transport via certain cloning vehicle such as plasmids or some other cloning vehicle and you uh, and you incorporate in the genome of a another organism okay and you cut the uh, organism and uh, incorporate in the genome of another cell or organism and you transform that particular gene into a cell okay or a small cell and that cell will proliferate and you what you can do you, you will be getting that gene okay and that particular cell can be proliferated with this newly introduced the gene okay and that can be cultivated or cultured in a laboratory such as tissue culture okay and 
from that particular tissue culture you can get that uh, explant or the plant and you can uh, uh, um, you you can plant in your place okay in the normal soil and that particular uh, plant will be grown okay and that is known as a genetic engineering genetically modified uh, plant and this can be a breed plant breeding and you will be having many varieties of such kind of plant and this particular plant is highly resistant to the environmental conditions and that is uh, highly nutritious that resistant to all the conventional problem that is uh, associated in the agriculture and this will give lot of yield okay say for example another important thing you can see the genetically modified banana okay normal banana and a genetically modified tissue cultured uh, genetically modified uh, banana you can uh, see okay and that is the way the new uh, gene that is introduced uh, into the banana tree that gene has certain peculiar features and that can be that can be introduced in the new host and that can be you will be getting a lot of uh, uh, big varieties of banana in comparison with the normal banana okay and uh, say for example and uh, what i am trying to tell is uh, why do you wanted to do this particular process say for example you wanted to create an insect resistant plant one of the most potential problem in the agricultural form nowadays uh, you will be uh, cultivating lot of plant but due to the insect attack okay and that will be completely damaged and you will not get any type of a uh, outcome from that particular plant this can be minimized by introducing this particular process so this is a genetically modified organism you are having a gene that gene can kill the insect and that particular gene and the protein is expressed that gene you identified from a uh, from a dna you cut that particular uh, fragment and what you need to do is uh, you as i said how will you cut this green region is your desired gene that has certain insecticidal properties okay and that you cut and you, that you digest with cleave with a certain enzyme called restriction enzyme okay and now you will be having the cleaved dna and how will you transport for that particular things you require certain vehicle that is used for the cloning okay that is known as plasmids okay and that are known as vector Vectors. vectors are the vehicle or the mediators that uh, transport this particular newly introduced gene to gene to the host okay and here also you have to use restriction enzyme and cut and what you need to do this gene you introduced into the a uh, plasmid or this vehicle for the cloning and you transport to the a uh, plant that is actively growing in a medium okay so this gene you have to uh, introduced into a, a plant or a cell that is actively growing into a medium okay and that particular gene will be multiplied inside that particular host uh, and this plant will be getting that insecticidal properties that was not there earlier and that you need to select and you need to identify which is the uh, insecticidal variety of plant and non insecticidal variety of a plant okay and that you select and you cultivate that particular plant whenever you can see when the insect will come and attack the insect will die due to the property of this particular gene and this gene is toxic for the insect so that particular gene will be once it is uh, there the insect will be insect insect that feed on the plant will be died so this is the way how this uh, resistant uh, mechanism insect resistant uh, um, plant will be created similarly you will be having lot of examples okay that will be able to create this particular uh, genetically modified uh, crops or genetically modified plant and this is highly advantageous as i said in terms of the outcome in terms of the quality in terms of quantity in terms of lot of other things okay so this is the most important uh, things okay and uh, you can see some of the genetically modified organism that is commonly using in the biotechnology or environmental science or agriculture okay herbicide resistant to herbicide tolerance okay the plant when you are applying for uh, when you are applying the herbicides that will be able to tolerate that herbicide due to 
presence of certain gene example soya bean herbicide the bt soya bean you can uh, use that soya bean when you are applying herbicide that can be able to tolerate okay then similarly the same thing insect resistant corn okay or barley or rice okay all those thing you will be able to see or maize or wheat okay the next one is fatty acid composition fatty acid is one of the major source of energy that can be the uh, the composition of that particular fatty acid by introducing a new gene that can be varied okay that can be enhanced example a plant called canola the genetically modified canola will give a lot of fatty acid similarly virus resistant certain plant which are resistant to the virus due to the genetic modification say for example plum okay so the genetic genetically modified plum next one is vitamin this is one of the most important application in especially in worldwide especially the place like united states of america vitamin a there are you know that vitamin a deficiency is one of the major problem in this particular united states okay then what do they will do they will incorporate the vitamin d gene or vitamin a gene into the rice and that the gene will be multiplied in the rice and that will be that will be creating lot of vitamins and that will be supplying the, to the vitamins along with the carbohydrate present in the rice and you know that that is known as golden rice okay that is uh, uh, having a lot of uh, i mean uh, uh, importance in the united states or food market and that is very commonly that is available then similarly uh, uh, to tobacco okay so the vaccine that can be the bt uh, the genetically modified tobacco can be used to create vaccines against the tobacco mosaic virus and similarly many more vaccine can be cultivated by using maize okay and you can i mean uh, allow the animals also to mature fast okay say for example salmon fish okay so the the hormone yeah, that you can uh, the hormonal gene that you can introduce into the salmon fish and immediately it will be matured and that can be used for a uh, feeding so these are the some of the uh, typical example of how we are using the the genetically modified uh, uh, crops or a uh, plant okay and uh, this has a beneficial role okay so that is the important thing okay now rather than this although this particular process is beneficial for the human beings and it helps to produce lot of quantity of the food item quantity of the uh, the need what you require with the uh, high quality and a lot of a uh, uh, conventional environmental problem this gene introduction the newly introduced gene will create lot of problem there are lot of risk and issues associated with this uh, use of genetically modified organism and contribute to the ecological instability of of the uh, in this uh, condition so that is what we are going to discuss first we have seen what are their beneficial role but uh, when you are doing that particular things okay so uh, there is lot of issues lot of problem due to the transferring of this gene from a particular host to the another particular host okay and that is the that is creating lot of detrimental impact uh, to the ecosystem and the environment okay so what are this particular ecosystem what are the, this risk that is associated with uh, this particular i mean uh, gene transfer okay the the first one is the application of genetic modification allows the genetic material to be transferred from any species into the plants or microorganism although this is a benefit so this particular process can transfer the genetic material from one particular species or a genus to any type of a organism so the introduction of a gene into the different cell can result different outcome and this overall patterns of the gene expression will be altered by the introduction of a and single gene okay so the newly introduced the gene they can they can create a different outcome and they will be the due to this particular expression of the newly gene the plant will be having or uh, the system or the new host will be having so much of detrimental impact also then the gene which is uh, whatever we have in, in, in inserted that can be integrated or additional fragment inserted 
gene sequence rearranged or deleted which create lot of instability or interference with the other gene that is already present in the uh, in the organism that create potential risk okay the gene whatever you are in inserting that can be integrated along with the normal gene the your uh, the cell natural or usual gene the foreign gene or a newly coming gene can be integrated and they can be additionally added as a fragment and the gene fragment they will be rearranged and that can be sometimes the deleted some existing feature of your uh, the gene that will be damaged will be the newly coming gene okay that is the another important potential risk okay and uh, each gene may control several different traits in a single organism so you are having a particular organism a particular plant that plant has a particular property but the newly introduced the gene due to the newly introduced gene the plant may not show that the property in which that is having originally are there okay so rather than it show a different property it show a different uh, expression of the gene okay and the insertion of a single gene can impact uh, the entire genome of the host uh, and uh, which create a lot of undesired side effects okay that create lot of undesired side effects okay now we are going to discuss what are the potential risk that is associated with the genetic modification of the organism okay first one genetic contaminator or interbreeding okay when you are introducing a foreign gene okay genetically modified organism interbreed with a normal organism that is known as a wild type or sexually compatible relatives okay the new gene can go and inbreed with the gene which is already there and that can be transferred from its wild type or sexually compact and partners okay so that is the so a gene will be that, that way new gene will be transfer from one host to another so the novel traits okay novel feature of that particular uh, plant or an animal will be disappeared due to the incoming gene okay and uh, they are sometimes their tolerance ability so uh, naturally they have some mechanism some uh, some uh, i mean resistant mechanism that resistant mechanism may be altered by the new gene okay or sometimes uh, their relationship with the ecosystem may totally changed and the behavior of that particular organism may change due to this particular process so that means you say the genetic contamination or interbreeding result a massive outcome due to the genetically modified organism next one is competition with natural species okay so the genetically modified organism can grow very very fast they have a competitive advantage over the native organism natural organism they will they will survive very slowly with respect to the environmental aspects but this genetically modified organism they have a much more uh, I mean adaptive ability due to the incoming gene they will be proliferated rapidly multiplied due to their over number the existing species may diminish from this particular ecosystem so this may allow them become invasive to spread into new habitat and and cause ecological or economic suppression and uh, damages okay so whatever in a particular place one new one particular uh, conventional natural organism is there plant or animal so due to newly introduced the gene the gene will be creating lot of problem to that particular organism okay so that may diminish that may create the, uh, the i mean the removal of that particular uh, organism from that particular habitat okay next one is increase the selection pressure on target and non target organism the desired gene will be having 
increased pressure the pressure may increase on the target and the non target process in comparison with the natural selection pressure okay then that causes they will be distinct resistant population will cause and that will be involved in the resistant i mean uh, population to the natural mechanism every plant and animal will be having some natural mechanism to resist the sudden environmental conditions okay but this newly incoming gene will uh, change their selection pressure of the target and they contribute the non target organism and totally the uh, the features will be diminished okay then the next one is the ecosystem impact okay so the effects of the change in a single species may extend well beyond the ecosystem okay the ecosystem that has lot of closely i mean living closely interrelated group you know we have discussed the food chain and the food web okay a single impacts are always joined to the risk of ecosystem damage and total destruction from a particular animal or organism in a particular habitat okay so the ecosystem also will be getting impacted due to the transfer of a gene okay next one is impossibility impossibility of follow up okay so some kind sometime once it is happening to the ecosystem so some problems happen due to the incoming gene although there are solutions but sometimes it is impossible to rectify once plant is getting this new characteristic and plant is changed the entire offspring of the particular particular plant will be changed and we cannot eliminate their particular plant or the feature in this particular environment okay and many of this risk are identical and it is not even possible to uh, differentiate when it is uh, whether it is naturally occurred or conventionally due to the uh, i mean genetic modification result okay so so that is why it is not safe or beneficial method it's always is a a threat to the ecosystem genetic modification will make lot of changes and this changes it's extremely tough to analyze and follow up and we can make the solution so that is the next important uh, main uh, risk next one is the transfer of a gene from one particular organism to another particular gene and this particular process is known as horizontal gene transfer or hgt okay so this horizontal gene transfer the transfer of the gene from one organism to a similar organism and what will happen that will be a transferred horizontally and uh, this gene will be created the acquisition of the foreign gene that is horizontal gene transfer happening the naturally by three process transformation transduction and uh, conjugation so conjugation is nothing but the transfer of one particular bacteria to another particular bacteria what gene the transfer of a particular gene from one particular bacteria to another particular bacteria by using a particular process called conjugation something called as pili so this pili will be connected together and the gene will be transferred from one particular bacteria to another particular bacteria then the transformation means the bacteria they themselves will be having an ability to take the foreign dna from the surroundings if the foreign dna is a transgenic gene or a, a newly coming gene that will be having some side effect and the new gene will be an, an entered inside the host of the bacteria then the transduction the transfer of a uh, the foreign gene from one particular bacteria or one particular organism to another particular bacteria or organism via bacteriophages they are viruses okay especially i mean uh, i mean living viruses the virus that specifically infect bacteria called bacteriophages that is known as transduction so this horizontal gene transfer and acquisition of the foreign dna that is happening due to all this particular i mean a uh, process okay so what will happen due to this particular process the environment will change okay and provide the organism especially prokaryote and uh, they have uh, the gene is un- in- inherited their original features will be diminished and they will be getting a newly uh, uh, incoming uh, the, the property of an incoming dna 
the next one is adverse side effect on the health on the people or on the environment okay due to this particular property the pathogenicity will be enhanced because the newly coming gene is a pathogenic gene means then it will uh, enhance the pathogenicity and emergence of new disease okay if the due to the pathogenicity and what will happen the emergence of the new disease okay the pest or weed okay then the increased disease burden of the virus now currently you know that the earlier coronavirus now the recently reported coronavirus they have lot of changes in their genetic uh, I mean makeup they are having more than 70 plus uh, percentage of changes they have observed the new strain and that is why the spreading of the new coronavirus or COVID-19 virus that will be high okay and that is a uh, uh, mean happening and uh, similarly that is due to this particular uh, transfer of the gene due to the mutation okay so and the increased weed or pest burden okay so the gene will be contributed to the uh, contributed to the uh, uh, the enhancing growth of the I mean the weeds or other types of a uh, uh, pest like organisms okay similarly similarly it has a lot of adverse effect in the species or community and the ecosystem totally diminished the 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 food chain and the food web and the next potential risk is uh, unpredictable and unintended effect okay so I told you due to this horizontal gene transfer what is going to happen that is not predicted okay potential pest or pathogen may be may be yet to be analyzed but it will be introduced a new gene so that uh, create a new feature that we never expect okay or a uh, unwanted features alter the ecological niche or ecological potential of the recipient organism and unexpected changes the structure and function of the gene the structure and function the normal structure and function of the gene will be completely changed and it produces an unexpected side effect an unintended unintended side effect okay so that is the another important thing next one is the loss of management control measures okay so you are having it is very difficult to uh, the control measures okay the regulatory approval are required for gmos to pre-regulated the spread of introduced the gene to another species by horizontal gene transfer it is strictly regulated the new GMO may give rise to adverse effect and controlling the management and uh, measures are uh, imposed to the original organism which uh, has lot of uh, uh, mean regulatory aspects and the license and permits are uh, required okay so that is another important thing loss of management control and uh, measure there is no adequate control and management to the managing okay and controlling the genetically modified uh, uh, organism then the long term effects whatever it is whatever we have discussed the short term effect but this is a long term effect what will happen due to the genetic manipulation the organism may acquire a new character that will be more severe in the longer time that will be there in the longer time okay and relatively strong selection pressure it may take thousands of generations from the recipient organism that will transfer from a generation to generation after thousand generation it may go and it will transfer the features okay and thus the timing of appropriate biotic and abiotic environmental condition additional changes in the recipient organism could delay adverse effect okay so the fact all these factors contribute a long term term impact and long term issues okay so these are the major types of risk that is associated with the use of genetically modified organism and another important thing thus i told you the use of this kind of protocol is strictly governed or strictly regulated by the government agencies okay and you are having lot of ethical issues ethical concern okay and what are the ethical concerns so what will happen the perceived threat to the integrity and intrinsic value of the organism that is originally how okay the integrity and uh, i mean uh, the intrinsic value of the organism is lost 
and the natural order and integrity species is lost okay and the genetically modified organism will create a lot of effects lot of unwanted i mean things in the ecosystem okay so when genetic engineer create GMOs or transgenic plant, genetically modified plants are known as transgenic plant. They have no means of inserting the gene in a particular position. The genes end up in a random location. Even if you introduce a gene, we don't know where the gene is going to going to bind. Okay, so that is it will be in, inserting in the uh, gene, uh, inserting and ending up by uh, locating in the random location in the genetic uh, material okay and the release of uh, genetically modified crops has lot of direct side effects and the gene transfer to the wide usually present organic uh, 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 varieties and with the conventional crop and which enhance the weeds and the trade effects on the non target species and so many unwanted things what we are uh, never expected so that is the another ethical concern the next one is the flow of the gene through the ecosystem the gene flow okay the gene flow from the genetically modified crop is possible via pollen grains you know that the plant having the pollens that is transfer from another organism to another organism via wind okay via insects etc and this gene flow will be the pollen is contaminated with the gene then it will be transferred from one particular place to another particular place the transgenic traits such as pesticidal toxin such as bt toxin okay that particular toxin they are uh, a pesticidal toxin they are able to they are able to create uh, uh, you know uh, pesticidal impact and they can kill the insects okay and they affect the non target organism say for example we wanted to kill a particular insect but unfortunately it uh, it will go and uh, create problems in the some of the organism that is not uh, that is having a, a, an environmental role okay that is beneficial for the ecosystem so that is the non target crop pest okay say for example you are having the bacillus thuringiensis that is known as bt that has a particular protein called cry 1 ab okay and this cry protein we are using to kill certain lepidopteral larvae when they are uh, uh, the, that some kind of i mean uh, insects when they are uh, affecting the i mean uh, plants so what will happen this particular uh, cry 1 ab gene we will insert in the plant and that plant we will make it as a transgenic variety so what will happen is uh, instead of i mean this larvae is killing okay what the insects you wanted to kill instead of killing that insects uh, one example called uh, some butterfly beautiful butterflies in the ecosystem called a monarch i mean butterfly okay this monarch butterfly the larvae of monarch butterfly consume this protein in the plant and they will be i mean they will be having a toxicological effects and the extinction or the disappearance of this monarch butterfly by uh, due to the toxicity of this particular gene has very well studied okay so that is the another important thing that is what i told you the non target organism will be affected okay the next one is extensive long term usage of herbicide gly of phosphate and uh, uh, glufosinate okay in bt crops can promote the development of resistant insect spread and weed okay instead of uh, the resistance they contribute resistant weeds and the pest okay that thing also will contribute this glyphosate and the uh, glufosinate these are chemicals okay and the spread of transgenic herbicide resistance via gene flow okay the transgenic herbicide resistant via gene flow the weed also will be getting that benefit and the g the weed will be overflown and that will be completely destruct the 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 other types of conventional uh, crop uh, plants okay over long time this gene the uh, that is known as transgene okay this gene that conform the resistance to the pest and environmental stress and uh, leads to greater seed production and what will happen that will be overgrown in a particular location and they extinct other useful population or the greeneries or a vegetation in a particular place and the non targeted species will be 
I mean, uh, uh, will be uh, may, will be eliminated from the ecosystem. If plant eliminate the organisms and the small creatures that is uh, living inside the plant or associated with the plants, including microorganism, will be will be diminished. Okay, so that is the another important problems of this particular case. The next one is the glyphosate mixed with the groundwater. Okay, this is whatever the the phosphate we are applying. This glyphosate that is a uh, mixed with the water and uh, produces okay soil and produce water contamination. Okay, the water pollution is caused a lot of disorder like uh, mouth, throat, and kidney failures, etc. Okay, this glyphosate and herbicide are very dangerous to the ecosystem. This damage the liver of many aquatic fishes. Okay, that is another important problem. Okay, and uh, they can reach out in the groundwater and sea water that result in the water pollution. They can grow. They can go deeper layer of the uh, main soil, and what will happen? Whenever we are creating the bore well, such a kind of water, this will be contaminated, and that will be consumed, and will be created lot of imbalance uh, in the ecosystem. Okay, and uh, the genetically modified uh, crop require more pesticide use in on crop. Okay, so rather than normal pesticide they require uh, more pesticides okay that causes the imbalance in the composition of the soil and the fertility of the soil the nitrogen phosphorus potassium all this natural fertility of the soil will be completely uh, uh, completely will be uh, will be gone and uh, it create a problems in the Uh, ecosystem okay and the pesticides are the harmful chemical that dissolve in the water which contribute to the pollution and that leach out the uh, river streams lake pond wells etc and it reaches to the body and it enters bio magnification whatever we have discussed in the previous class okay that create lot of uh, issues okay so because of this particular problem all this ethical issue the manipulations of the naturally available gene the genetically modification it is uh, strictly regulated the genetic manipulation is strictly regulated there are so many regulations laws okay by laws for the release of a genetically modified uh, uh, organism if you wanted to release a particular genetically modified organism it should protected with uh, the several national or international agencies approval okay there are so many conferences exclusively dedicated and discussed a lot of uh, deliberations about the regulatory aspects and the um, um, the, the parameter that you need to be strictly followed while regulating or releasing the uh, genetically modified organism due to all this described properties whatever we have seen okay then the first one is stockholm conference in that has happened in the united nations 1976 and the rio declaration in 1992 united nations similar many more okay many more things they have uh, they have used the uh, like that then what are the who all are the authority if you wanted to release the genetically modified uh, modified organism to whom we should approach there are agencies in uh, government of india and the central government as well as state government even the district level we are having committees to strictly regulate without their permission you will not be able to do any of this particular genetic manipulation of any Uh, a living organism that is already present say for example recombinant dna advisory committee rdsc is one committee next one is uh, rcgm that is the review committee on genetic manipulations okay then genetic engineering approval committee gsc genetic engineering approval committee then these are the state as well as central government committees and you are having the district wise committee district level committee dlc okay so all those committees approval are required to release the genetically modified crops or produce genetically modified crops even though the genetically modified crops will give lot of benefits at the same time it contribute lot of problems and ethical concerns okay that is the important aspects what we are going to what we have discussed okay that's all dear students for the uh, today's class so we can conclude so the class was begins with a brief introduction of what are gmos genetically modified uh, organism 
then the gm crops what do you mean by gm crops typical example what are the process of genetic modification how the genetic modification is happening okay how this particular process is happening how we will create a particular genetic feature that means to say insect resistant plant okay how are you going to create this ge genetically manipulated plant or transgenic plant okay then what are what is the what are the example of genetically modified organism which are result from the the ecosystem or agriculture and what are the potential risk associated with the use and release of genetically modified organism in the ecosystem and what are the ethical concerns of a genetically modified organism and what are the legal aspects and what are the regulatory authority or approval agency for the study of genetically modified organism that's all dear students we can use any of the microbiology books or biotechnology textbook that talks about the transgenic crops and uh, gm crops okay these are some of the books and thank you very much for uh, attending this particular class if you are having any doubts you can mail me or you can uh, ask me thank you very much